Okay, on the wheel, uh, we're going to uh, be using several uh, tools. Uh, because I've uh, uh, got another bowl that I threw yesterday to follow through with the, the whole process, um, I'm going to be trimming a little bit later. So I'm going to be using these trimming tools and the next step. But with wheel throwing, what we do need all the time is a bowl, a dish of water, and uh, we'll need for bowl making a nice flexible rib. There's wood and uh, metal also ribs that you can use. Uh, I prefer the flexible rubber rib like that. You'll need a needle tool, a cutting wire. This is monofilament line that we use. And uh, your nicely wedged clay. Okay, so um, uh, again, making sure that the switch is on, the pedals uh, just where you want it. Now, you really do want to pay attention to the posture as you, as you address the clay, because um, how uh, you take command of the clay is is uh, something uh, very critical for your success. And one of the things that I've found in these years of teaching this is to really consider how you're going to um, work the clay. It's not going to work you. And one of the things that you uh, can do to really um, help control is, is to go through a process um, much like a tennis player preparing for serve or uh, a golfer uh, setting up. There's a lot of concentration that takes place uh, and you want to focus on just what you're doing. So. Um, you want to get your hands nice and wet. You saw me plop this down on a dry wheel head. And we're going to first off do what's called centering. You want to have a, a nice uh, slurry built on your hands like that. Just get it worked up. And um, you can see I just plopped it down pretty close to center. Now. If your clay is doing the hula and wobbling back and forth naturally, you can see you're not on center. I'll have some kids do this with their finger and they'll make a mark and see, yes, it has to go the other way. All right, centering is the foundation of your clay pot, whatever you may be throwing. But it has to be centered first. Like I said, this is your foundation. If it's not centered, if it's wobbling, you're going to wrestle with it all the way and most likely your um, degree of success is lessened. So, posture. Arms on your legs, on your knees like this. You can see these shoulders, your arms, your whole upper torso has a lot of strength to it. And this is an isometric kind of push into the middle that is uh, something that I've done for a long while and so it's easy for me to do. But if you're uh, working this clay like this and, and you're doing this for a long period of time, you're not really doing the surge that you need to do for centering. It is basically getting set up and pushing that clay right into its center. So it's centered like that. Now, I don't use a lot of water when I'm throwing. I think it's, uh, you can see there's no uh, dish for the water here. I don't like to use those because it promotes just kind of a sloppy uh, way of working. And you don't need to have a splash pan and, and spray everywhere. Just keep your hands with the slurry on it. Okay, we've centered the clay. First step. Okay. No wobble to it. Get it just right. See the surge? See my arms? My hands always touching one another. Uh, the orientation uh, um, and your coordination is really important to have. It's really important to have your hands working together. You can see here, we're diving down into the clay with our thumbs. This is called the opening. 
So first step center, second step opening the clay. Again, your arms on your legs, and you can go down with your thumbs like that, finding center. I'm gonna go down with my fingertip, go down a little bit further, right in there. Okay. So we're, we've basically opened the clay, and we want to uh, see how deep this is here. We don't want to have too thin a bottom. And I'm looking at about a half an inch. For this size bowl, uh, a half an inch, maybe a larger bowl, three-quarter inch, um, with your needle tool, just poking through. Now that'll heal right up by working it like this. Okay? All right. Now, the fun begins. All right, I'm gonna use a sponge. I like to throw with a sponge. Some people like to use um, uh, a chamois or uh, different um, positions for their hands. But I was taught this technique uh, for the pull, which we are doing next, the claw. Now, the claw is going to fit right over on the shoulder of the pot here and you can see my hands working together if I need a little bit of moisture I can squeeze the sponge so it's this is what I've learned uh, the way I've learned to throw um, clay pots so next step the pole now the pole is uh, a, a very very difficult most difficult part of this process because it takes a pressure of uh, squeezing the clay up with the claw and bringing your hands up in a very steady way with an even pressure. And this is something you need to do a lot to get the feel of. So, as you can see, my arms again on my legs here uh, and we're going to reach down in and undercut on the outside and basically pull the clay up. Now we're going to do that several times. Undercut, pinch, and pull. Okay, I'll do it on the side here. Pinch, pull. And if you have your elbows on your legs, your hands are very stable and you can work it. Um, you shouldn't be working with your hands separated. Uh, uh, you shouldn't be working on the side that's coming towards you because naturally it's going to jam you. So you want to uh, be surface uh, working uh, the clay as it goes past you like that. So another pull. Nice and even. You can see the terracotta clay is kind of dominating the, the white clay at this point. And it, uh, it only shows up after we trim and clear the surface, uh, you'll see the marbling. All right, needle tool. We've got a little wobble at the top. This happens quite a bit. Um, we wanna take our needle tool through to our finger and pull that off like that. All right, stabilize that lip by pressure, pushing down just a little bit. And at this stage, what we're gonna be doing is using the rib. Again, steps being centering, opening the clay, and then making the pulls. And again, uh, a half dozen pulls should suffice. Sometimes it takes a little longer, bigger piece of clay. All right, we want this rib to be nice and smooth as the clay passes over it. Um, you can see the nice contour to this rib. And you can see that I'm gonna slide it down into this cylinder shape. And we'll see the plasticity of the clay with this maneuver here, which is opening the clay into a bowl shape. A 
and I can see there's a little bit of a wobble. We're going to straighten that out like that, get that lip straightened out. And going down in, getting that clay compressed down at the bottom, very important. And you can see that we're starting to flare the clay a little bit more. Alright, work the outside. Um, again, uh, gravity will take over if you take the clay out too far. You're going to have the, the clay start to slump on you. You want to avoid that. And uh, again, if you use a lot of water, your clay uh, will, will uh, get softer and um, uh, start to droop on you. You don't want to use a lot of water. Just enough to keep the surface nice and slick. Okay, so I'll make a, a, a flare pull a little bit further like this. Get the lip nice and firm. Again, compressing the lip will prevent any kind of warping. All right. The last step I'm going to, uh, with this wheel throwing, is I'm going to use this uh, metal rib. It's a little bit sharper rib, and we'll get a little bit smoother contour uh, on the interior with this. Now again, we'll, uh, we'll be trimming this up a little bit later. I'll show you some neat tricks. All right, so we're getting close to where we uh, want this. If you were to do a flange on this, I'll do, do one uh, with a flange just because we're here. We can fold this down like that. And soup bowls with a flange, they're, they're, uh, it's a nice decorative kind of thing, but it's also very functional. It uh, makes the bowl a lot stronger thing. And um, it's a more open bowl because of it. So I put a little flange on that. I like to put a ridge between the interior of the bowl and the flange. I'll just use the edge of my needle tool there and voila. Um, okay. Now, um, taking uh, a thrown piece off the wheel is uh, sometimes um, you can mess up. So, uh, you can do it in many different ways. Now, a lot of people will use a bat, uh, which attaches to the wheel. With You can see the, the holes that they have here. There's pins that go in, and you can put a round bat and just lift that off like that. Some people prefer that. Um, I will just do this kind of treatment here. I'll get some water, get my cutting wire, slide that water underneath, Give it a half turn, and you can see it's freed the pot. You don't want to push it too hard. Okay, I'm going to get a small board uh, and just transfer this to a small board, and then we're uh, going to go to the next step, which is the trimming phase of this project. So, voila. Okay.